Microsoft Office 365 offers many tools that allow you to securely share files with other people, which includes both UMB employees and people external to the university. Within these tools, there are numerous ways to share files depending on who you want to share with and why. This video is going to focus on one method, which is to share an individual file through OneDrive or SharePoint, and specifically in the situation where the file is too large to send via email, which means any file larger than 25 megabytes. During this tutorial, we are going to review a high-level overview of OneDrive, SharePoint, and how they differ, how to access OneDrive and SharePoint through the Office 365 portal, the steps on how to share a file that is larger than 25 megabytes, how to stop sharing a file once the need no longer exists, and how an external recipient will experience receiving a shared file. Both OneDrive and SharePoint offer the ability to store files, and from either location, files can then be shared as needed. OneDrive is primarily for files that you alone need to store and access. However, when needed, the ability to share files does exist. This is not recommended for long-term sharing or if a large number of files needs to be shared with a specific person or group of people, which is where SharePoint comes in. SharePoint is specifically designed for teams or groups needing to have access to the same set of files. However, individual files can be shared with other people, internal or external, without that person having access to the SharePoint site. As this video is specifically about sharing a file too large to email, the steps we're going to review next are the same whether the file is stored in OneDrive or SharePoint. Let's see how this all works. I'm going to access my files to the Office 365 portal. All I need to do is enter portal.office.com into the URL field in my browser. I'll enter my UMB email into the Microsoft window. And once I select Next, I'll be directed to the UMB Office portal. I'll be able to sign in using my UMB email and password, which have already pre-populated in this example. After selecting Sign In, if this is the first time signing in or if it's been a while since you've signed in, you will be prompted to authenticate through Duo. Once I'm signed in, I'll come to the home page of the Office 365 portal. To the left are the icons that access the various Office tools available to us. As I scroll my mouse over each icon, the name of the application will appear, as we see here. I'm going to take us to OneDrive first by clicking on the OneDrive icon. I will come to the files that, by default, only I have access to. We can see that they are listed by name, when last modified, and by whom, the file size, and then whether they have been shared or not. Once I scroll down, most are listed as private, and then a couple have been shared. With sharing a file or a folder, what this process is doing is sending a link to the file. The recipient will be able to open it, and if given access to do so, edit the file. As they make edits, you'll be able to see the changes directly in the file, which is another benefit of using Office 365, the ability to collaborate. Let's review how to share a file. We'll need to locate the file in question. For this tutorial, I will share the addendum file. There are two quick ways to share. One, I can roll my mouse over the file and the share icon will appear. Or two, I can click anywhere on the line of the file to select the file and in the toolbar, the share icon will appear. Once I select share, the send link window will appear. Sending a link will default to people you specify can view. This doesn't need to be changed. In the To field, you will select who you want to send this file to. If the recipient is a UMB employee or student, this field is a search field and will access the UMB directory. As I begin to enter the name of a colleague, her name will appear and I can select it from the drop-down menu. If the recipient is external to the university, you must enter their entire email address. However, if you've shared the file with them before, their email address will be saved and you can select it if it appears. Once the external address is entered, it will be noted that the email address is not within UMB. To the right is the View Edit icon. The default is Can View. To allow the recipient to edit, click on the icon and select Can Edit. Then in the message field, enter a message. Once complete, click Send. The link to the file has now been securely sent to the recipient. After a moment, OneDrive will update and under the Sharing column, Shared now displays. The steps reviewed are the same if you want to share a folder. As you'll notice, as I roll my mouse over the folders, the same share icon appears. Now let's talk about removing access. As with sharing a file, there are a few ways to stop sharing. If I've determined I no longer want to share a file, in the sharing column, I can click on shared, or I can click on the ellipses and select manage access in the drop down menu. Either option will open the manage access panel, which appears to the right. This will display who has access. Under Direct Access will list the owner, then under Links Giving Access will list individuals that I have sent the link to. I can stop sharing one of two ways. The first is to click Stop Sharing, which will remove access for everyone who is not an owner. 
The second is to select by individual. I can click the X to the right of any individual who I want to remove access from. Once I do that, I am prompted to confirm this action and I'll click remove and that person no longer has access. If I want to change the level of access someone has, I can do that by selecting people you specify Then I can change to or from can edit or can view. Once we return to the main manage access panel, we also have the ability to share a file from this location too. As with many functions in Office 365, sharing and removing sharing can be done from multiple locations. While we're in OneDrive, let's review another feature. In the left-hand column is the shared menu item. Once I select it, I'll be able to view files that have been either shared with me or shared by me, as stated by these tabs. Any file that has been shared, regardless if it's stored in OneDrive or in any SharePoint library, will appear here. It basically provides a one-stop shop to view any files that someone has shared with you or that you have shared. Shared by you is a good location to view files you've shared and determine if any of them should no longer be shared with others. You can roll your mouse over any file name, select the ellipses, click Manage Access, and the panel will open to the right. And as we just reviewed, you can remove the sharing privilege if necessary. So far, we focused only on OneDrive. Everything that has been reviewed can also be done from SharePoint. To access SharePoint, I can go to the App Launcher in the upper left-hand corner and select SharePoint, or I can look under Quick Access in OneDrive, and the SharePoint sites that I have access to will be listed here. It's a quick and easy way to get to my various document libraries in SharePoint. In this example, I'm going to select SITS Enterprise Training. At this point, everything will work almost identically to what we did in OneDrive. One difference is that there is no shared column. This is because all the files are automatically shared to anyone with access to the SharePoint site. However, if I want to share a file with someone outside of the SharePoint group, once I locate the file I want to share, just as we saw in OneDrive, the share icon will appear. I can select it, the send link window will appear, and I can share the file as previously reviewed. I can also click on the ellipses to select manage access to remove access. While we're not going to go through these steps again in detail, the process will work exactly as it did in OneDrive. Let's shift gears for a moment and review what an external recipient will experience when they receive a secure shared file link. If the recipient is using a third-party mail client like Gmail or Yahoo Mail, they will need to verify themselves to open the email. For this video, we'll be using Gmail, but the steps will be similar for other third-party mail clients as well. Once they've received the email, they'll click on the message to open it as usual. Once the email is open, click on Open. The request verification code will appear. The recipient will click Send Code. A code will be sent to the same email address that you sent the file to. Once the recipient receives the code, they'll enter it into the Enter Verification Code field, click Verify, and then they'll have access to the file. It's a straightforward process and helps ensure that the correct recipient received and can open the file. Again, overall, OneDrive and SharePoint share many similar functions. The primary difference is that OneDrive is for files that you alone have access to, and SharePoint is for a team or group of people who work collaboratively and need to all have access to the same files and information. This brings us to the conclusion of this tutorial. This was a high-level overview of OneDrive and SharePoint and primarily focused on how to securely share large files larger than 25 megabytes that can't be sent through email. If you want to learn more about Microsoft Office 365 and its many tools, please visit the Office 365 support page at umaryland.edu slash office365. If you have any questions or issues, please contact the help desk at either the phone number or the email address listed here.